Hey beautiful people, it's Misko here. Now let's be clear, I am not saying that I am taking a step away from being a designer. I am not saying I am taking a step away from freelancing. And I am also not saying that I'm leaving my passion behind. However, I have been running multiple seven figure design agencies for the last six years. And in this video, I wanna walk you guys through in detail the main reasons why I have finally decided to take a step away from the agency land, running design agencies, not once, but twice, and why I really pushed myself to make the final call of leaving millions of dollars on the table so I can pursue something new for myself. Now, I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time, but I couldn't figure out when would be the perfect time to create this video to share with you guys. However, the other day I received a comment from Andrew and he said, why do you make these videos? I mean, really, this is masterclass stuff and you need to get paid for for sharing this. I have seen numerous figure vids and they don't come close to the clarity as you do. Smashed, subbed, just feel like that's not enough. And I really appreciate the fact that he said smashed because I always say, if you do enjoy these videos, please gently smash that like button because it really does help this channel grow. Now I realize now would probably be the perfect time. There are people who are actually asking me why I'm making these videos. The reason is because in December 2020, I finally said to myself, I am taking a step away from running design agencies, even though they are extremely profitable, they've treated me extremely well. I've made over $4 million in terms of design work. And I wanna share with you guys the key decisions on why I'm leaving so much money on the table and why I'm taking a step away from all the hard work that I've done over the years. Now, for anyone that has followed my journey, you would know that I am extremely passionate about what I do. And if you've seen any of my videos or if you've followed my journey on other social platforms, you might, you will have realized that I started hustling when I was 16 years old. I've been working on so many side projects. I've worked with some great companies. I've been able, I've been given the opportunity to join companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft. But the last couple of years, I started to realize my passion started to fizzle out. And it's quite sad to feel that you're slowly losing passion for something that you've loved dearly for so long. And it's been mind boggling. And I've been trying to figure out what has happened along my journey that has led me to deciding to really take a step away from multiple design agencies that I've built from the ground up. When I first designed my very first website over 13 years ago, I always had a dream of creating a business around UI and UX design. Now, 13 years later, I'm making this video to share with you guys the reasons why I've decided to take a step away from it. Now, you're probably thinking, 13 years? Mizko, you look 13. Well, here's a secret for you. I'm actually turning 30 in three months and blessing or a curse, that's for you to decide. Now, over the last six years, I scaled my freelancing journey into a full-scale design agency with over 10 full-time employees. And then when I decided to wind that down, a year later, I actually co-founded another design agency which made over seven figures within its first year and we were able to hire full-time employees, we were able to move into a nice office and all that good stuff. Now, this might sound like the absolute dream for someone on the outside, but Honestly and genuinely, someone on the inside who has to lead and strategize and run the entire operation, more specifically the agency model, is an entirely different story. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly all the reasons why I've decided to make this decision so you can plan ahead and you can make sure that you make the right decisions if you decide to scale your freelancing operation into a full-fledged design agency. Now, the first reason is repetition. So when you're running a design agency, you need to make sure that you are prepared to be able to simply churn through hundreds of design projects for your clients. That is just the nature of the agency model. There is a company out there that needs your skills or your team's skill set, and then you need to make sure that you meet those deadlines and you deliver the project. Once that project is done, then you're onto the next project, and then onto the next, and then onto the next. And personally for me, it was great at the start, but I wanna make sure that I spend my life and my time on meaningful things. I wanna make sure that I'm spending the time to work on projects that I wanna work on. I wanna make sure that the projects that I work on are also meaningful and I find fulfillment in them as well. And ultimately, I wanna make sure that the projects that I'm working on or the team or the business that is working on isn't just about moving the needle for the business, but ultimately helps individuals grow and become a better person, but rather be able to have the impact to really make a difference 
for an individual person. When you are running an agency, it is extremely fast paced. It is very different to the momentum that you have when you are a freelancer. When you are an agency, you have overhead, you have salaries to pay, you have a lot of expenses that you need to make sure that you can cover every single month. And as an agency founder or co-founder, your responsibility is to make sure that you can make ends meet. And when that happens, the way that you operate is going to start to shift and you're going to try to churn through projects as quickly as possible. Now, the second reason is about growth. So as a founder, more specifically for the agency model, your role is to hire people to replace you in different departments of the business. So let's say we go back in time and I'm still a freelancer. Now there is so much work to do. The first person I would hire would be another designer. So then I have a designer who will replace me in designing the actual design work. And then that allows me to focus on areas such as admin, sales. And then once there is too much work for two designers to handle, then I'll potentially bring on another designer. And then I might figure out, okay, we need, to, we need someone for marketing and I can't do all the marketing now because I'm getting tied up with other things. Then I'll bring on a marketer. Now, eventually you will remove yourself from the equation so much that you will only really have one job. And for me, I was ultimately just looking after sales, bringing in deal flow to make sure that we had enough work for everyone to work on and to have enough revenue to offset our expenses. Now, that was my ultimate goal. And if you wanna learn a little bit more, there is a great book called Built to Sell. And they talk about how you should create system and processes from day one so you can ultimately flip or sell the business later down the track by hiring the right people and setting up the right processes and systems so they're automated and you don't need to be part of that equation. Now, I would say I'm still fairly young and I still genuinely enjoy doing the problem solving, thinking about the projects critically and working on things that I find very, very meaningful. I still wanna be part of that process. But over the last six years, time after time, I realized I have ended up in a position where I don't find fulfillment in running the business itself. And I'm not saying that all businesses are the same. The agency model specifically really does limit the creativity and the things you get to work on because you spend most of your time working on other products for other businesses and you don't have enough time or potentially resources to focus on the projects that you personally wanna work on within the business. Because ultimately, as an agency, it requires very, very high human capital, meaning that you need to hire more people to grow. More people means more expenses. More expenses mean more stress. So with all this happening, I really didn't feel like I had enough opportunities for me to grow as a person, as a designer, and as a founder. Because ultimately, we had so many people automating these processes and working extremely well in different departments that I wasn't really involved in many of the activities and it just didn't make sense for me to be part of those processes anyway, even if I decided to be. So this was one of the main reasons why that I thought to myself, six years running agencies, I've seen it all, maybe it's time for me to take a step away from it, not work in my comfort zone, and don't keep turning back to what has worked before and potentially look for a new venture to work on. Now the third reason has been a lack of planning. Now, when I look back in retrospect, the two design agencies, the first one that I founded on my own, the second one that I co-founded, they grew extremely quickly because we naturally have a reputable name in the tech industry. So we had a lot of traction, a lot of people already knew about us. Now, when the business generally goes quite well, then you don't really think too much about planning because you, everything is already running so smoothly. Now, one thing that I realized that I didn't do that I should have done a lot more frequently is to actually plan ahead. A lot of the times I took every day as I came. And what I realized what I should have done is at least every six to 12 months, I should have sat down, reassessed where the business is at and, and define what the goal is for the next six months or the next year. Or at least define what the vision of the company should be. Because when you are running an agency, like I said before, it is very, very fast paced. You're constantly churning through project after project after project. And because of that, it can feel quite monotonous and quite dull over time. And you need to make sure that you realign with yourself to make sure that you are moving in the direction that you want the business to be in, in the next two, three, five, or 10 years. Because I didn't do that, because I took every day as I came, and because I was so fixated on short-term goals, I started to lose vision of where I wanted the business to go. So if you decide to start your very own agency, make sure Make sure that you are prepared for the churn, 
make sure that you are prepared for the ongoing project after project after project, but also don't get lost in that process. Make sure you take a step away from it. Make sure you realign with yourself, realign with the plan, and make sure you have a clear vision of where you want to take the business because once you lose track of that, ultimately, even if you're making millions, even if the business is growing, if you don't have that vision, if you don't have that destination set, you're going to lose motivation and inspiration and you won't understand why you're in the game. Now, the fourth reason has also made a major impact on my decision as well. So personally, I genuinely love turning a personal idea into a reality. Now, if you watch the videos about how I got started in design and you also watch the videos about how I got started in freelancing, you'll realize that I have worked on so many different ideas and I've turned those into a reality. Now, that is a passion of mine and I really do love those challenges of having to start from scratch and trying to figure out how do you get traction? How do you design it? How do you make it look appealing? How do you make it look delightful? When you get customers, what do you do with it? Now, when you're working in the agency model, you are constantly so flat out trying to figure out how to solve those problems for other clients. And that takes up a lot of time, which also limits you in spending and allocating resources and time to work on those ideas that you wanna to bring to life. So for me, after six years of running the agency, I realized I just haven't had the chance to really grow, work on projects that I wanna work on, or help or actually build any products that I really, really wanna to bring to life as well. Now, with that being said, I do not regret one minute or one second of that entire journey of going from freelancing and building and scaling and growing a design agency because that has opened up a lot of opportunities for me. It has taught me how to grow a business. It has also treated me very, very well financially. And I think without doing that, I would not have gotten to a point where I have I would be so determined to come out and start my very own venture or startup that's outside of the agency model. So if you've been thinking about it, don't let my video stop you. This video is really dedicated to making sure that you are well equipped with everything you need to know to start your very own agency so you don't go through the same mistakes that I went through. So then in December 2020, I finally had that really, really tough chat with my co-founder for the second design agency that I co-founded back in January 2020. And I told him it is time for me to take a step away and really figure out and try to focus on a new venture that is really outside of the agency model, something that is beyond my comfort zone. And lastly, internally, I just felt like it is time for me to really double down on and really think about what can I do that is beyond my comfort zone. So for the last 13 years, I've been a freelancer, an in-house designer, running a design agency, and ultimately, even though they're three different skill sets and experiences, ultimately, they are still the same type of work. I am still helping someone else design and think through their own product. Whether that's from an agency point of view, whether that's a freelancing point of view, whether that's an in-house designer point of view. And I've been yearning for a time where I can take everything that I've learned as a designer, as a marketer, as a coder. I wanna be able to bring all my skill sets into one problem that I can try help solve for people from all around the world. So that leads me to what am I working on now? So two things that I've been focusing on slowly over the last three months since I decided to take a step away from the agency is first a freelancing course because I think that hands down has been something that a lot of designers have been asking me about. And I genuinely feel like I have a lot of practical tips, insights and experiences on how you can build a very successful freelancing career from the ground up. So that will be coming out fairly soon and it is very practically driven. A lot of activities that I've designed from scratch to help you get started step by step and I've left a link in the description if you wanna get early access to it. Now, the second project that I've been working on is called The Designership. So The Designership was created back in 2016 as a Slack channel to bring together designers from all around the world when I first started to freelance. Now, the channel has grown to over 18,000 designers. And over the last three months, I have reinvested quite a bit of capital to redesign the entire website to bring value to designers every single day. So as a MVP, it is really just to share you guys six useful and valuable resources to help you become a better designer. Now, there is a massive plan that is going behind the scenes that I've been working on 
every single day and it's starting to form and because I'm taking my time and I'm not rushing into another new idea and I'm letting it process and take its time to grow, I'm starting to see a big opportunity where I can bring together creators from all around the world to share, learn and grow with each other. And this is something that I'm really passionate about and if you can see, this type of project that I'm working on now, this has a direct impact on people that can actually help them grow. And it's entirely different to the type of work that I've been doing as a freelancer and running an agency that is really targeted on just helping large organizations improve themselves. Now, I guess I'm trying to value my time and really focus on working on projects that have a lot of meaningful impact on individuals all around the world. And I wanna make sure that I can teach a lot of the insights and experiences that I've made over the years to these people. Now it is still early days and I don't want to reveal too much. So if you want to follow the journey, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like this video and make sure to join my newsletter or follow me on social media such as Twitter and Instagram. And I'm sure you will see a lot of progress happening behind the scenes. Now, before we go, I just want to clarify, being a freelancer is great and running an agency is also great. And these two opportunities are perfect for a lot of people who are still starting out or they've never had a taste of that freelance or agency life. And I know a lot of designers aspire to having their own design agency one day. And I want to reiterate, yes, it is great. Yes, you make a lot of money. Yes, it is very fun, it is very fast paced opens up a lot of opportunities for you and it opened up a lot of opportunities for myself. But this video, once again, it is just my thought process on what it's like and how I have seen it after doing it for so damn long. And I have to say over the last 13 years, I have really milked that freelance and agency life. So make sure you utilize this video as a way to start planning ahead and making sure you don't make the same mistakes that I made. All right guys, hopefully you found this video extremely useful and make sure to stick to the end because YouTube will probably recommend you another valuable or insightful video from my channel to help you guys move along. All right guys, I'll see you in another video very soon.